Wednesday morning. It's creaky, it's cold, it's rainy. We're in a haunted mansion here. Um, so I wanna give you a little free, open to the public, live stream. If you like what you see, you can join our virtual membership on our Patreon for the streaming every day. Shameless plug. For everyone else though, you know what to expect, you know the drill. I'm gonna turn this off for a second, be right back. Here I'm buzzing. Right on. So normally I have a, either a horror movie soundtrack or some spooky music or some doom metal playing, blaring. Uh, but for the sake of the quality of our live stream this morning, uh, you're just going to be stuck with the sounds of nature and my terrible voice. So I hope you enjoy it. Y'all can get started lying on your back. be there in a second just as soon as I uh, complete the ritual setting here. So we're going to start lying on our back, grounding, graving, maybe that's what we should call it here, graving instead of grounding. I feel like grounding is kind of an overused term in this world anyway. I feel like the people that tell you to be grounded the most have no idea what grounded means, but that's just me. I know you're smart, you, you know, you figure it out. You're, or else you wouldn't be here if you weren't already elevated. Uh, so this is going to be, uh, I wouldn't say a beginner class, but not crazy. It's a wake up weird, wake up, wake up and feel good. I have a lot of requests for mobility in hamstrings. Well, I guess that would be mobility in hips, flexibility in hamstrings. The difference between mobility and flexibility is mobility, we're talking about our joints. Flexibility, we're talking about our muscles. So there's that. There's that knowledge bomb you can take with you. So we're going to work today on back bends. A lot, of, uh, a lot of requests for back bends. How do I get more mobility in my back bend, an open heart, an open chest? Um, we're going to work on that. We're going to start subtle, and then we're going to end with something like a wheel or you know an inversion pose that requires more of the back bend. Uh, and I will show you how we can work up to a posture like that. So thanks for being here, weirdo. So if you're not already on your back, like me, Get on our back. Let's walk the feet in, heels towards your beautiful booty. Knees are up. Arms are going to lay out to the side, spreading your bat wings. Reach through each fingertip, fingertip to fingertip stretch, pull your scapula apart. Double chin your chin, push the back of your neck and head into the back. Push your feet into the mat, curling your tailbone under so we can really push our spine and engage the core, belly button towards the spine into the mat. Draw a breath in, feel it expand through your back, through your belly, up into your chest, feel yourself get heavier and exhale, nice and slow, you can sink more into the mat. On the next inhale, we work our bat wings even more open, reaching up over our head with our fingertips, stretching from the waist all the way up through the fingertips, breathing in, feeling the side body expand with air, fill with air, exhale it all out, and then straighten one leg at a time, point the toes, and take a big full body stretch on the next inhale, toes point, reaching all the way up to the fingertips. Exhale, bring the knees into the chest. 
Rock them back and forth. Massage your back. Open up your lower back. Drawing the air out of our belly when we exhale deeply and pulling the knees even more into the chest. So we'll take this time on our back to warm up our hips and our hamstrings, uh, as well as our lower back for our back bend. Pull back really for back bends, but a lot of injury can occur you know, in the lower back because of weak core, etc. We want to take the time to warm that all up. So that's what we're going to do. Let's grab our knees like they are arcade sticks. Shameless plug, we have a Mortal Kombat arcade cabinet in the back after yoga. Uh, take one on one fatality challenges on the daily. Uh, and let's start to draw circles. Like they're joysticks, right? Like they're that arcade movement uh, device. If you can think of a better name, please drop it in the comments. So we're flossing our hip joint. We're taking the hip through its, its ball and socket joint through that 360 degree range of motion. Right, so we want to draw circles, and you might be like, I can't draw circles right now. These look more like deformed um, baby heads, and I would say that's completely fine. Everybody is different. Reverse the circle, uh, and depending on our mobility and the health of our joints and our the tightness and fluidity of our connective tissue surrounding the joint, everybody's pathways here are going to be a little bit different. So you work within your own awesome little pathway. That sounded super cute. I didn't mean for it to. It's way more cute than I normally sound in class. You're getting a special version of the Crypt Keeper today. And if you reach any point that feels super weird or is sticky or you reach a fork in your beautiful path, if you reach a demon on your beautiful path, uh, stop and breathe into it, blow them a kiss, and continue. All right, so after about 10 or so circles each way, our hips should be feeling nice and groovy. Uh, so now let's drop the feet, knees are up, arms come out to the side, and we windshield wiper the knees left to right. Warming up our back, warming up our core. Massaging the outer hips, massaging your upper back into the mat as well. Now let's reach up with our arms. We can continue to slowly windshield wiper. That's allowed. All right, so we reach up with our arms, give ourselves some wrist circles, work out the fingers, rotate from the rotator cuff. Some free movement here to warm up the wrists and shoulders while we windshield wiper. And then, once the knees are up, let's heel toe the feet a little bit wider, just a little bit, because before they were probably connected. Uh, then we're going to bend the arms, bend the elbows to bring your fingertips like by your head. Right? So, this is for like if we're, we're going to set up for a wheel. If you're someone that wants to learn wheel, or you almost have wheel, or you're you know you're just more interested in it, this is a way to warm up for that. And a key part of doing a wheel pose that's popping up into a back bend um, is the wrist mobility. And we want to basically get our fingers under our shoulders, right? So that we're not going to do it yet. But it's way too early in class, way too cold for that. But to familiarize ourselves with this position. Again, we can continue to windshield wiper. Um, is smart. It's a way for our body to uh, not be shocked once we're trying to get there. And it's an awkward position. It requires a lot of shoulder and wrist mobility to bend our arm back, our hand back, almost behind our head. But really, we want to work it in so it's about above our shoulder or like fingertips reaching behind the shoulder. So that stretches the tricep and works the wrist and shoulder. Anyway, let's bring the hands down by the side now. Press up through the heel, squeeze the butt, push the hips forward to a glute bridge. So that's part two of our wheel. And this is gonna work on our back bend. Lying on the floor, this is an easy little back bend. So we're squeezing the glutes, pressing the hips forward, and the inner thighs are squeezing together. 
Think about squeezing the inner thighs together more than you're squeezing your ass together. So if you're over squeezing the glutes, that's going to overcompensate and lead to just more muscle imbalances. Drop the butt down, inhale, reach the arms up, full body stretch. Exhale, bring the hands down, bend the knees back to another glute bridge. Maybe we can work the fingertips together, straighten the arms, chin to chest. Pushing the hips through, squeezing the inner thighs together like we have a, a skull or a spell book or whatever on brand item you wish to squeeze between your thighs. That sounded like that could go in a dirty place, clean your mind. Uh, squeeze your butt together then, so we don't over squeeze the glutes at first. And then we can pull it up a little more. Push your hips through, press through the heels. We should be burning, we should be turned on. Pull the arms down, chin to chest, tuck it. Tuck it, tuck it. Slowly let it go, arms reach to the side, heel toe the feet even more apart. And we start to windshield wiper one knee at a time in. So but we're really working that internal rotation, which is something I, as a uh, coach, trainer, whatever you want to call me, uh, I don't see addressed a whole lot in yoga specifically. I think that's one thing yoga misses a little bit, is the inward rotation of the hip. We don't really do too many poses, which granted most of us need more open hips, outward rotation. But again, we don't want to be imbalanced, and then that causes movement compensation and injury in the whole, the whole life. Uh, so I really like to take the time in other workouts and movements to uh, do some inward rotation as well. So don't overlook any, leave no brave stone unturned here. All right, I'll shut up. Bring both feet together. Draw both knees in towards your chest. Take a happy baby. Opening these hips up, now we're going to get the hamstrings a little more involved. Okay, so we're grabbing the outside edge of the feet, or the ankles, and we're letting gravity help us bring the knees in towards the chest as we take gentle rocks back and forth. So this is massaging our spine, opening our hips, breathing. This could be an inversion pose too at the end of practice, for those of you that don't know. And I always call this happy dead baby, so please don't be offended by that. We're new. You look beautiful out there. Are you happy dead babies? After lifting dead. Oh, can we bring our feet together so we're making this diamond shape in the air like butterfly wings? Death's head mock wings. That's rough. That's more like it. Really try to pry your knees open. Maybe we can take elbows to those shins. That's a little bit of a deeper stretch. Love you. Uh, can we grab the big toes? Take our two fingers, grab the big toes, try to straighten out the legs as much as we'll go. Without ripping your, uh, you know, your legs off the bone or anything, just open them up. Then we come back to happy baby, like we're drawing a bow and arrow, bend one knee, straighten the other. Feel our hamstring open, pull the straight leg more into the chest, yeehaw, hip and hamstring open in, feeling good about it. Serve. Back and forth. Just a couple times. You can stay in each position uh, for as long as you like. And the beautiful thing about doing this at home, you can pause this video, go back, stay in a pose longer, whatever. You know, you're in control. I'm just I'm just but your vampire guide right now. Bring both feet together, straight legs as much as you can, reach to the toes or the ankles or the shins or wherever you're at, and pull both knees in towards your chest and stretch your lower back, stretch your hamstrings, give yourself some ankle circles. Good. Keep your left leg straight, bend the right knee to make a figure four, ankle crosses over the knee, we reach through. The triangle we create with our legs, pull your straight leg in towards your chest while you pry the right knee open with your right elbow. This is a lying pigeon, so it's going to, again, work on our hip mobility. And we can continue to 
take some ankle circles or warm up your toes, your feet. We're building from the ground up today. So we're going to be on our back for a little bit longer. Don't worry, we'll get moving soon. So let's bend this left knee to 90 degrees. Arms come out to the side and we'll take a line twist with our feet just like this. So our right foot's going to contact the left side of the mat or the ground and we look towards the right. And we just enjoy this line twist for a second. I know it's an opening class, uh, but we still want to hit some twists always. We're going to do more longer twists at the end. If you want to straighten the right leg, grabbing the right toe, pull yourself more into the twist by all means necessary. Next inhale, slowly unwind. Straighten both legs up. Shake them out like crazy, like spiders dangling on a, an electric web. I just thought that was pretty clever. All right, figure four on the other side. Enough to my own horn. I'm going to shut up. I promise. I promise I'm going to shut up. One day. Uh, make that figure four the same thing we did on the other side. Pry your left hip open. right side, look to the left, and we come into whatever variation of a twist feels right to us. We're here for like three breaths, slow your breath down, we didn't talk about breath a whole lot, but Y'all been taking yoga with me for a minute. You know how important breath is. You know how to breathe, and if you don't, we have introductory classes and courses on breathing. What? You can hit me up. Hit me up for it. And stop smoking vapes, you fucking nerds. Lame. Smoke real cigarettes or real meth instead. Like a fucking proper, like a proper lifting dead army war. Dracula with faith. Anyway, I'm old. Let's unwind. Oh! One more hip circle in each direction. Plant the feet. One more glute bridge. Really engage the whole backside. Squeeze that ass. Squeeze the back together. Find your palms together. Pull the stretch forward. Squeeze the pumpkin between your legs if you're trying to break it. Ooh, unwind. Straighten out the legs. Come to a sit up. All the way up into butterfly. Butterfly legs. Plant the hands behind you. Palms face back. Palms down. Sorry. Fingers point back. Just pry the chest open. Let the head drop. And let the knees and hips open at the same time. Pressing strong through your palms, opening up your chest, broadening your collarbone. You hear that cue in yoga a lot. I don't use it enough. Pull the chest forward, let the head drop. Breathe in. Breathe out. Push off your fingertips. Let the fingertips crawl in front of you, keeping the back straight. We fold forward. Although at the back bend class, we do want to fold forward and stretch. Our back, stretch the lower back, squeeze the core, engage the core until we get stronger so it can be open enough to come into the back one. Good job. And just briefly, we'll take some more hamstring and hip openers before we really start moving. I know it's a slow warm up, but we really want to warm up before we attempt anything crazy. So, left leg out straight, right sole of the foot is into the left inner thigh and we reach down to the left foot with our left hand arcing the right arm over and really open the side body and open the hip and open the hamstring. We don't want to stay for too long because we don't want to cool down we're just warming up so we just want to hold for two breaths and or even one long breath and we find the same thing on the other side. And we 
exhale wide and open out into a V and fold forward into whatever uh, depth feels appropriate right now. It might be a little early to access a full full on depth in this. So just be kind to yourself. Breathe in to straighten your spine. Breathe out to walk forward and walk back. Let's do that two more times. Breathe in to walk your hands forward. Breathe in to walk your hands back. One thing I'm going to show you I like doing for this is a rolling V. And again, you're at home, you can pause the video and try it. Rolling back onto your back into like a plow pose. So you bring your feet behind your head or up over your head as much as you can. And then you roll forward, open your legs, and use the momentum to help yourself shoot yourself forward into more of a stretch so we can access a deeper range of motion from that momentum that we create in the rolling knee. And it's a great massage for your spine. And uh, it just feels really cool. You feel like a, a ninja gargoyle type situation, which is all that we want here. Okay, uh, fingertips point towards you, behind you, you bend your feet. You bend your knees, we press through our feet, reverse tabletop. Squeezing the butt up, pressing the inner thighs together, letting the head drop. Engaging the back, working into our back bend by pushing the hips forward, letting the back arc. So we drop down, tailbone on the ground, nice and easy. Bend your arms a little bit, and we have that big stretch in our shoulder, our front shoulder front delt, I should say. And we need that for our back bends. We need that shoulder mobility in all directions. Press up, back to butterfly legs. Speaking of shoulder mobility, we will warm up the rotator cuff, arms straight, right palm up, look to the right, rotate from your rotator cuff, left palm up, look to the left. Three times back and forth. And scarecrow arms looking straight ahead, pull your shoulders back, only use the rotator cuff to bring your arm all the way up, hands all the way up, maybe even a little bit behind you, really open, and then let them down. All those little muscles in our shoulder girdle and the rotator cuff. Rotator cuff is very complex, actually, a lot of little muscles in there. We want to make sure we warm all that up. Scarecrow. Whatever your version of a scarecrow is, is lovely. Let's bring the arms back behind us, interlace the fingers, straighten up the chest, fall forward in this butterfly. Nice. Let's come up, come to all fours. Wiggle, wiggle, zigzag, the butt up and down. Exhaling as we push the ground away into our cat spine, inhaling as we come forward into our cow spine. I'm not giving you a whole lot of specific direction here on purpose because I want you to loosen up and take what your body needs. You know we do traditional cat cows in just about every class. Rotating the spine, squeezing the air out of our belly as our head drops and finds space in the scapula, pulling the spine upward. Cow, we drop the belly, tailbone tilts up, chest drops, chin opens, Throat opens as we're taking all the air we can. Arms are straight under our shoulders. Initiating with our breath. Initiating from our core. And whatever version of that we want to take, that's why I like to add some free motion. I always say like our belly's like a washing machine, right? So we circle and we take the rest of our body with us. We can zigzag. Uh, bring your fingertips back towards you. Again, this is how we work on that wrist mobility for our wheel pose. And we shift the weight back and forth. Yeah, you'll feel that uh, forearm stretch, tucking the toes. We get the top of the feet to stretch as well. A lot of bang for our biz up here. And uh, then we reverse that. So we bring the knuckles to the ground, make some fists. Get a real comprehensive class here it's turned into. So we're gonna, we're gonna do a little bit of everything but still keeping the focus on the hamstrings and back bends and hips. So let's straight the right leg back, reach the right arm forward, balance here. This will help you in your back bends because this strengthens our core by making it even and strong. So make sure the right hip is down. There's a tendency for the right hip to want to come up and over and be weird. Align it. Hips are even. Pelvis is even. We're squeezing the belly. 
strengthening the core. A strong, a strong core is the best medicine for back problems. Crunch, elbow to knee, exhale. Plant the left hand, squeeze the right glute as we bring the right foot up closer to the ceiling, pressing even weight through both hands. Then we float the left hand up and try to make the C shape of our spine. Right, this back then, looking up more, reaching up more. Exhale, crush. Bring the left hand down, straighten the right leg. We're still hovering it. Bending the left knee again. Right knee again, I'm sorry. And then we reach back with the left hand like we're trying to grab the ankle or the top of the foot. Pressing strong through even weight in the left knee and right hand. So this works introductory little back bend like a bow pose. Unwind, bring it down, knee to the ground, shake it out, relax. If we need to sit on our heels, shake out our wrists because our wrists are hurt to do that. If not, same thing to the other side. Left leg back, right arm forward, stabilize the pelvis, hold. On the next exhale, crunch. Inhale, plant the right hand down, send the left foot up to the ceiling and find the C-shape in your spine. Pressing strong through both hands, doming the, the back. As we would be concaving the back. And then reaching the right hand up more like we're trying to reach for something on a shelf. Making that C bowl shape with our, with our spine. Crunch it down on the exhale. Plant the hand, straighten the left leg back. Bend the left knee, reach back with the right hand, like we're trying to grab it. If we can't grab it, act like we can grab it. Believe we can grab it, or grab your pants. Whew. Let it go. And uh, child's pose, yeah, we'll take a child's pose. Nice job. Nice job in child's pose. I think we'll get a little flow on now. I think we'll hit, hit, hit some uh, quick sun sounds, get the body moving, take a vinyasa, uh, again focusing on our hips, back bends, and all that stuff, it's going to be radical. Uh, let's shift the weight forward to plank, squeeze the belly, press forward, press through the hands, measure out your down dog, shift the weight back, find the down dog. Take whatever adjustments we need to. Maybe we need to bend the knees, pedal out the heels for a minute. First down dog of the day can be a little creaky, a little sketch. Uh, so live with that. So deal with that, basically. It's not your bad. You're wonderful. Let's come up to the toes, bend the knees, look forward, hop or step to the front. Forward fold, halfway lift, forward fold. Pressing strong through the heels, slowly rise up, one vertebrae at a time, reach the hands up overhead, yeah, it feels good to be up and alive for once, interlace the fingers, come into a standing back bend, pushing the hips forward, stretching through the core, exhaling, hands down to heart center for mountain pose, feel what that's like being strong, standing up and a badass, lifting the warrior, hands to heart center. Bring the feet together, press through the hands, root your feet through the ground into the mat, breathing up from our feet into the crown of our skull. And then exhale, let it all go. Feel strong, get ready to rock. We're gonna get ready to rock. Uh, release the hands, palms forward and down. Sweep back up overhead, interlace the fingers. Bend the hips to the bend to the left, push the hips to the right, big right side body stretch. On the next breath, same thing to the other side. Inhale, look up and back. Press the palms up, back bend again. Exhale to bring the chin to the chest, interlace the fingers behind you. Straighten out the arms, fall forward. Forward bend, peeling the chin. Chin down, peeling the shoulders open, chest open. Release the fingertips to the ground for halfway lift. Plant the hands for forward fold. Step back to plank. We can drop the knees, chest, chin on the ground or 
come straight to the ground. Chaturanga, drop the belly, drop the chest, untuck the toes, let's come to baby cobra. Squeeze the back together, light on the fingertips or hovering the hands. So we're really, this is step one to a back bend. Well, maybe not step one, but it's an introductory little thing. Little, that's why it's called baby. Baby cobra, so cute, dead baby cobra. Relax, breathe out, breathe out, head down, relax. Strong breath in, strong breath out. We're gonna do baby cobra again. Initiate from the feet up. So we press the feet down, we squeeze your ass together, we turn on our lower back muscles and all the muscles up our spine as we gently lift the chest, peering slightly forward, chin is back, squeezing the uh, scapula together, the rhomboids together, the rear delts, all those muscles, squeeze them like we're trying to bring our elbows together. And then that just naturally lifts up our hands as we peer forward. So this is engaging our backs, pulling the heart forward gently into a back bend. Bring it down. Take a breath to recover. We do have that same setup, but we're going to take it to Cobra this time. So we're graduating from baby Cobra to middle-aged Cobra, or whatever it's going to be. I feel like a middle-aged fucking Cobra. Inhale, squeeze everything together, up through baby cobra, but we press strong through our hands and lift the chest and belly button off the ground, off the mat. We keep the arms bent, we don't want them straight. Elbows are bent, pull your elbows back, pull your heart forward and feel the spine curve up through your head. Take in a breath here, all the air we can. Exhale down slow, unravel the spine. Bring it down. Take a breath to recover. Cobra again. Transition slow from the feet up. Should feel better this time. Arms are strong. Pressing even weight through the palms. Hearts forward. Chin slightly up. Exhale, release. Now, uh, we're going to turn this into upward dog. A lot of people don't know the difference between up dog and cobra. That's cobra. Up dog is straight arms, and we're on the tops of our feet. So it's super old cobra instead of middle aged cobra. Upward dog, it turns into a dog. How's a snake turn into a dog? That's some alchemy shit that we have, don't have time to figure out in this class. So inhale, squeeze everything back to cobra. But once we're in cobra, we slide the hips forward, press strong, straighten the arms, crack the bones, shake out the cobwebs. And we lift up the hips because we're on the tops of the feet. So the only thing touching the ground are your palms and the tops of your feet as we pull the heart forward don't lose that back bend. Press straight through the heels of our hands. Peer forward. Pull back to down dog. This transition uses our core so much. Find our your lower abs. Belly button in towards your spine. Flip one foot at a time. And find down dog. Pressing strong through both hands. Make your spine longer. Hips come up and back like someone's grabbing you and pulling you up. Release. Exhale. Inhale, up on the balls of the feet, bend the knees, step or hop forward to a halfway lift, fingertips to the mat. Inhale. Exhale, forward fold. Slow rise, one vertebrae at a time. Tadasana. Not close. Hands together. Take that breath of power from the ground up. Rock and roll, roll, let it out. Feel recharged, rejuvenated, strong. We're going to keep this going. Inhale, both hands up. Little back bend. Push the hips forward. Arms reach back. Exhale, slow rise forward. Keep the arms forward like we're throwing a soccer ball or a skull. Press your ass back more. Find a tall spine. 
Long spine, halfway and descend, slow, bend the back, stretch the lower back. Fingertips to the ground, straight back, halfway lift. Exhale, plant the hands, step back to plank. Drop the knees, chest, chin, or take a straight chat to run up, push up, down, sliding forward and lifting up to our upward dog or cobra if that feels better for you. Find that back bend. Back to down dog. Press strong through both hands, the right leg lifts up and back. Maybe we open stack the hips here. Don't want to forget about our hips. Open stack the hips means bring the right foot over to the left side, look under the right armpit. Big side stretch, big hip opener. Square back off, three-legged dog. Shift the weight forward as we exhale, bringing the knee to the chest and stepping the right foot forward. Come onto the fingertips, runner's lunge. Pull the right hip back, left hip forward. Spin the left heel down, parallel to the back of the mat. Left foot's parallel to the back of the mat. We cartwheel the hands up for a warrior two. And it's a warrior two. Nice and strong. So we're still opening the hips, right? Right knee psh, out over our right middle toe. Arms are connected through the back. Nice, strong left leg. Center yourself. Peer forward. Inhale, reverse warrior, just for a second. Bring the right palm up, reach forward and back, big side body stretch. We'll take this to our triangle, opening those hamstrings a little bit. Right fingertips down the straight right leg as we straighten the right leg and we pop the left hip back, big sassy hip pop, working the right hand down, left hand up. Reverse warrior again, bending the right knee, coming up slow through reverse warrior. We're not moving super fast in this class. Good, back to the straight leg triangle, but we're gonna flip both, bring both hands around, come to a pyramid pose. We may need to turn, oops, turn the left foot in a little more or short, shorten your stance a little bit, like warrior one legs to find this pyramid pose. And this is really, really, really going to stretch our hamstring. Pressing back through the right, right heel, bringing the right hip back, left hip forward. Good job. Now we bend the right knee, rise up to a warrior one. We're already in warrior one stance. Maybe we have to readjust that back foot in a little more. Bring the hands behind you. Pull the heart forward, straighten the leg into a back bend. Bend the right knee, take it to humble warrior. Come forward, maybe we straighten that leg a little bit. Both fingertips come to the mat, re-bend the right knee, Spin onto the ball in the ball of the foot in the left toes. Drop the back knee, untuck the back uh, left toe. Rise up in the low lunge. Pushing the right hip forward, left hip back. Right hip back, left hip forward, sorry. And as we push back with the right heel, scissor the inner thighs together. And then drop a little more forward into this. And maybe we can take this to a little back bend. Reaching back from our thoracic spine. You want to feel more in your upper back than your lower back. So take whatever adjustments we need. Wiggle out of the toes. Use your hips. For big, serious stretch for your hips and lower back at the same time. And then we exhale, unwind. Engage your core as we straighten the right leg. Take it to a half split. Fall over. Crazy stretch for your hamstring, but also good to restore your back and lower back after all that back bend. Plant the right foot, left hand down, spin the right hand up. 
modified side angle. Press off your left hand for a kneeling twist. Bring your palms together in prayer. Left palm, left elbow pokes outside of the right, right knee. Pressing strong through both hands. Look back behind you. Come back up into a low lunge. We're going to work that shoulder mobility here. So we bring the right hand down behind us. So the back of the right hand is towards the midline of the body in the center of our back. And then we reach the left arm up and overhead to try to take the bind. Right? And if we can't, then you lose, you suck, you have to turn the video off and go home. And go back to bed. No, it means that's something to work towards. And this is going to stretch our tricep and help our shoulders out so if we want to access the wheel later, we can. And if anybody's super balanced and crazy, uh, we can straighten the right leg and come into that half split again with hands like this. But slowly unwind, come up, release the hands, plant both hands inside of the right foot, bend the right knee, tuck the left toe, straighten the back left leg for a lizard, take a lizard push up, or get lower in lizard as we pry the right hip open with the, le with the right elbow, press straight up, drop the back left knee, bend the back left leg. Reach back with the right hand again for a back bend or a, a wheel prep, a bow prep rather. And it stretches our quad, it also helps our hip, it also helps us in our back bends. Bend and straighten the leg, feel what that's like. Come back to lizard, step back to plank. Take it through our chaturanga, through our vinyasa flow. Back to a down dog. Press strong to the down dog. Work the heels towards the ground. Five, make this your resting pose. We're pressing strong to the hands. Chin to chest. Hips reach higher. Bring the left foot up. Open stack the hips. Full sequence again on the other side. Can we do it? Can we remember it? Yes, we, of course we can. Square off the hips. Step the left foot through. Frame the front foot, prepare for warrior two as we rise up. Think about your hamstrings, think about your hips, think about your back, where are they at in this pose. Our core is turned on, someone's pulling our right hand back, so we're in the center, we sit down a little more. Left palm up and back, reverse warrior. Triangle. Right hip back, crawling the left fingertips down, opening up the hamstring, opening up the side body, bend the left knee, take it back through reverse warrior, opening up our left side body, we're between two panes of uh, sweet stained glass, right, so stay, stay tight. Cartwheel both hands or fingertips down to frame the front foot, take your back foot from warrior two to warrior one, pyramid. Might need to readjust the width of the stance. Whatever feels good for your body or feels better for your body. Bend the left knee. Maybe again, we might need to adjust the back foot. I need to step mine in a little bit more so I can rise up for a nice warrior one here. Wiggle up and out of the hips. Use the side body. Re-bend re the left knee, sit down into warrior one. Bring our arms behind us. Maybe we straighten the front leg again to pull the chest open, shoulders back. Bend the left knee, come to Humble Warrior. See what it's like to straighten it from here. Big hamstring stretch. Rebend the right knee, bring the fingertips down. Spin on the ball of the back foot. Take it to a low lunge, you want a slow rise up. Scissor the inner thighs together, left hip back, right hip forward. Getting up nice and tall. Before we move more forward, bending the left knee and sending the heart forward, tilting back from the thoracic spine into a back row. Engage 
engage from the core like we're doing a sit-up. Transition here, squeezing the belly, straightening the front left leg, falling forward, stretching the back, opening the hamstring. Half split. Strong breath in, straighten the back. Exhale, surrender, release tension. We find tension with our mind and our inhales, and then we release it with our mind and our exhales. We believe that, we feel that. Next inhale, we'll replant that left foot, bend the left knee, rise up to our low lunge. We switch hands this time. Left palm turns behind us, lower, lower on reverse knuckles to the spine, midline of the body. Right arm reaches, reaches down behind us, stretching that right tricep to find the bind. Or if we can't find the bind, we can grab the shirt or use a towel or a strap or a chain or a whip or a, you know, an arm that you just have laying around like we do. Find what that's like. Maybe we take this to that half split variation with the bound arms. Keeping our back straight though, we don't want to crunch. Slowly unwind, take this to the lizard, try that left hip over. We can take a push up or have some chaturanga arms or whatever version of our lizard you want to be. It's wonderful with me. Hey. And we drop the back right knee. Hey, more run. And then we bend the right knee, reach back with the left, left arm. We'll back bend. We'll bro bow prep. We'll bro bow prep. The bro bow. We we'll make that a thing. Again, bending, straightening. Seeing what that's like. Releasing tension, working. Working the joints, working that hip and back mobility. Good, let's come back up, drag that left foot back to a plank. Do a vinyasa, find that strong back bend, and then find our core coming to this down dog. Two breaths in down dog, treat it like a rest pose. Step, hop, jump to the top, halfway lift. Flatten the back. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, rise up one vertebrae at a time. Final standing mountain pose. Feel nice and tough and badass about it. Just press the hands together. Root the feet into the ground. Firm up everything. Breath of power from the ground up. And let it out. Turn to the wide side of the mat or a long side of the mat. There are two. Do your best to figure that out. Wide legs. Interlace the hands behind you. Look up. Straightening out everything. Again, find a back bend. And then we transition to a forward bend. Opening the hips, opening the hamstrings. Pull the arms back. But don't crunch, don't round the spine. Don't make a C shape. Keep the spine nice and tall. As we reach out with the hands, grabbing the ankles, pulling ourselves down more, relaxing here, bending one knee, straightening the other to further open the inner thighs, further open the hips, further open the hamstring. Wonderful. Plant the hands, heel toe, both feet together. That was just for fun. Bring the front side of the mat, step it back to plank. Lower all the way down. Arms reach out to a cross. Bend the right knee. Bend the right elbow. Press off the right palm as we scorpion tail with the right foot over to the left and open up with the right hand. Maybe we hover the right foot and reach for the ankle with the right hand. We're working on that. Crazy little variation. That's something to work towards. Yeah, it's a total back bend, chest opener, hip opener. Same thing to the other side. Nice and easy. Take your time to set up. I know I kind of rushed through the, that transition. That's on me. I would correct myself if I was taking my own yoga class. So don't do as I say, not as I do. 
Stay away from vapes. Less vapes, more blood and weights. I'm gonna make that a shirt. Don't vape, here's blood and weights. Something like that. Up like that. Relax, unwind. Thank you for dealing with me. Um, bend both knees. Actually, scratch that. Straight both legs. Bring the feet together. We're going to find a locust pose or Superman pose first. So you bring both feet up, squeeze your butt, big back bend, back strengthener really. Squeezing all the muscles in our back like we were doing through that baby cobra transition. That baby cobra sequence. We're going to bring both arms out to the side to see if we can bring both feet up a little more balancing on our core. Our abdomen. Maybe we straighten both arms up. Bring it down. Let's try it again, both arms up, both feet up. Look up, make that C shape with our back. And then we reach both arms behind us like we have this energy ball force field skull situation between our palms. And we're reaching back through the shoulders, making the spine taller, curving the head up, but bringing the feet up too, pointing the toes, making the C shape, and then relax. Flat. Now we bend both knees. We reach back for the left ankle with the left hand. See what that's like. Let it go. Reach back for the right ankle with the right hand. See what that's like. Can we grab both? If not, we're doing one side at a time. Settle yourself here. Bring the knees together as much as we can anyway. Like we have a block or whatever between our thighs. We peel the chest off the ground and then we extend back, kicking through the legs to straighten the arms, which brings the chest up more, which brings the butt off the ground more, hips off the ground more, as we pull back into our version of a bow and our own unique mobility and flexibility and all these areas we worked on today is what's going to determine how far we can go in the bow pose. So if you're somebody that can't get that far, don't worry, don't be mad. Get yourself on me, please. Big hip opener big heart opener, big throat opener, an anti-depression pose, believe it or not. Depression, we're closed off, we're hunched forward, we're good. You know, we gotta open the heart. Open heart, it's an open body, it's an open mind, it's a happy one. Bring it down, relax. Woo, shake it off, bring both. Shake your booty, yeah, it feels good here. I'm telling you, it's weird to do it. Shake the arms out. You can rest the chin, rest the cheek on the ground, rest your forehead on the ground. Whatever feels good. It's going to be flat here and bend for a second. Before we tighten everything back up, shift the weight forward up through our cobra, back to a child's fist. You fucking killed it today. Now. Running out of time since I'm babbling, but um, if that was enough for you, no need to attempt anything else. Um, we can take our cool down stretches, which since we are working on hips and hamstrings today, is just going to be a forward bend, both hamstrings, or a wide leg forward bend, or both. I'm gonna take you through wheel. If anybody wants, because I know a lot of people want that. Um, if this is your first time ever doing wheel, please be careful. Um, or maybe not, and if you want to try to work more closer with me, then let me know and we can we can have like a personal uh, coaching uh, thing, a personal session. Uh, Cause I don't want anyone to try anything and get hurt. But we did warm up enough, so if you think you got it, I think you you know, you're smart. So we can try it. I don't want to make it scarier than it is because it's not that bad. Um, but you can't fuck yourself up just like anything else, just like in any other realm. So just be careful. Uh, wheel, we're going to come back on our back. Bring the knees into the chest first, squeeze the core. Stretch the back out. And then we plant the feet like we're in glute bridge. Right, so we're going to find that glute bridge position, not extending the hips up yet, not squeezing the ass. I say ass too much, you say butt, so it's just better. Uh, not squeezing the butt, booty. 
Uh, we bring the, we bend the elbows, bring the fingertips like to where our shoulders are. Really good mobility, you can get like under your shoulders or just palms by the ears. You know, everyone's going to be aligned differently. So this is also a thing that I'm not there with you. I can't tell you what's the best alignment for your body. It's just going to be what feels the most natural and right to you. Um, and then try to go a little deeper into it, working the mobility. So first you press like somebody has, the puppet master has your belly button on a string that's pulling you up to the ceiling. We press through the heels to engage the inner thighs, engage the legs, and then we engage the butt, and then we bring the belly button up, and then we press through the arms, and then maybe we come onto the top of our head. Maybe this is where we're at. Maybe we could shift the weight more forward and up so we can bring the top of the head onto the mat. So we press a little bit through the top of the head and really strong through both arms. You have to say strong through the hands, strong through the triceps and shoulders as we push ourselves up to a full version of a wheel. So we want to lead with our hips. Our hips are pushing forward. My belly button is up. My legs are straight. My arms are straight. Squeezing the inner thighs together. Don't lose the inner thigh engagement. Don't lose the glute engagement because then your back will compensate. Such a good big stretch for your core, your throat. And just hang for a few seconds before we lower ourselves down just the way we came in. Counter pose. Hug it in. Hug it in for a counter pose. Throw yourself into the ball. I hope that made sense. And I broke that down really slow. If anyone wants to watch me, it be then it becomes more of a fluid thing once you set up and then you can really envision just your belly button on a string and this is kind of like a more gymnastic -y way to get into a bow instead of like breaking it down slow like I just did which is good if you're if you're learning uh, really just visualize your belly button on that puppet master string and then we press evenly through our feet and our hands and just kind of pop yourself up more fluidly into it and finding that, that mobility through our thoracic and uh, lumbar spine. Come on up. Forward bend is another great counter pose for that. We hold here, we cool it down. Slow rise up. Maybe we take some seated twists. We're lying twists. Again, we're cooling down. Make this cool down yours. Whatever stretches you feel like you need to take. Seated twists, lying twists, forward bends. Maybe we take another inversion, which could be a happy baby, a hamstring, uh, a shoulder stand, legs on a block, legs on a wall, anything like that, like the flow of blood reverse. Um, I don't want to keep you for much longer. I am running out of time because I'm a babble machine. Uh, but I have really a good time teaching this class for y'all. And I want you to hit corpse pose. I want you to hit corpse pose like you fucking mean it because it is the point of all this. You do all this to get to our relaxation, to get to our savasana. So the effects of this practice can sink into your body. And we can reach that meditation point. So play some good music, enjoy that meditation, earn it, focus on that memento mori, right? We use that as a motivator in DCL world. We come to terms with the fact that we're gonna be a corpse, actually a corpse, not, even, not just playing one in Savasana very soon. So, how much time does that give you to do what you want, to have the impact you want on your world, your life? You get deep, but when you keep death that close to you like we do here, a lot of people say that's grim, that's, eh, I don't know about that, which it can get that way, but to me anyway, there's nothing more motivating and positive than coming to terms with that reality and the, the finiteness of this existence would be, uh, it's a whole lot more beautiful when you think of it that way. And, uh, gives you an urgency to do do the right thing. Move right, but it starts here. It starts with your breath, it starts with you. That's how we work on ourselves, we work on our heart, we open that up, we move right, we breathe right, we act right. Do good, be good, be strong corpses, make an impact on the world that is good. 
because you are better for being here. And so am I. So thanks for this opportunity. Uh, with long with you. I love you. Namaste. I'm going to close it out. Very grateful for you. Hit that fucking corpse pose and fuck them up today. What would let me do? Do that. Love you, bitches.